My name is Justin Lee. I am the Director of Government Relations here with the League of Cities and Towns. Um, prior to this job, so I've been in this job for a whole, I think, four months now about. Um, prior, okay, so there's, is, there, is that shown in other locations or just on ours? Yep, we see it. Okay, beautiful. We're running. All right, so prior to this job, I was the Director of Elections uh, in the Lieutenant Governor's Office. Um, so... I, I have to say this, um, some of you ran for election, well, all of you ran for election recently. Some of you have, have been in, in opposite sides of issues with me over the years, and I apologize for that. Um, it's, it's kind of part of being, being in that gig for 10 years. So let me first say, if I've ever been a jerk to you, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Wasn't on purpose. <laughs> Wasn't trying to be. Uh, but sometimes I know that when, when you get an issue with the government agency that that we, we get really obstinate sometimes, and so I apologize for that. But I also want to say that now I'm on your team. Now I work with you. So if you've ever thought, man, that guy is hard to work with, well, that's what the legislature has to deal with now. So, uh, and I'm on your side. Um, so first off, um, if you look in your folder, um, there is a, there is a, a sheet, a one-pager, says our foundational principles on the top. Um, the thing I want you to take away from that sheet, more than anything, is our contact information. So our legislative policy team. Um, we've got the contact information on there for the team. If you need to reach out to any of us, please do. Um, please reach out to us. We've got our emails there. Uh, like I said, Cameron's on there. You've met him. We have other people. Molly Wheeler is our policy director. Uh, Carson Eilers is our, is our analyst. Liam Throckill is working for us on ARPA. Meg is our land use expert. Uh, you've got Roger and John who've been talked about. So we have all resources there. So please never hesitate to reach out to us on any legislative or policy issue. That's, that's what we're here for. That's what we're here to help you with. So as we're working through policy, uh, we have a few things. We have our foundational principles, which Cam mentioned earlier. The ULCT represents municipalities before the legislature based on the foundation of three interdependent principles, respect, collaboration, and outcomes. So we want the state legislature to respect your role as local governments. We need to respect their role as well. And then we want to collaborate with them on these policy issues to get the best outcomes uh, for, for our municipalities. The camera not following me. Yes, go, go that way. Is there it better from here? There you go. Okay, cool. I'll stand here then. So All right. Um, <laughs> trickier than a radio show, yeah, for camera. Um, second, we have our legislative policy prism. So, as Cameron said, we are tracking hundreds of bills during the legislative session. Um, and we'll talk about this in a second, but we don't have time, um, and I don't think anybody wants this, for us to call every single person up. Um, that's in the League of Cities and Towns and asks their opinion on every single bill. So we do have a policy prism that helps us um, look at bills and decide, is this something right off the bat that we know we support, that we don't like, that we need to work on? Um, so we have three different policy prisms to go through. One, we're going to ask the question, does the bill respect the traditional role of local government? If it doesn't, then we're going to have a problem with that bill right out of the gate. Two, we're going to ask, is the bill a one-size-fits-all approach, or does it respect that every city is unique? So Cameron said it earlier, a lot of times one-size-fits-all really means one-size-misfits-all. Um, there's a very big difference between Salt Lake and Schofield. So if legislation is being passed, we want to make sure that it respects those unique city roles. And three, will the bill result in an unfunded or unworkable mandate on cities? Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with these. Um, if you haven't been a part of this yet and you work in government, it will certainly happen at some point. The legislature sometimes funds things, sometimes they don't fund things. Sometimes they say, you're going to do this, and there's not any money with it, so good luck. So that's one of the things that we're going to be watching out for. So these are kind of our, our first prism tests that we're going to look through policy. Um, if it doesn't pass these tests, then we're going to have a problem. We're going to need to discuss it. Um, if it passes all three of those tests, then that's not something we're going to need to spend a whole lot of time discussing. So Cameron mentioned there was a board. There's also what's called the Legislative Policy Committee. Now, also in your folders, there was a sign-up sheet and a Legislative Policy Committee, LPC, is one thing that you could have marked down that you were interested in. So what is it? Legislative Policy Committee provides the general legislative policy guidance to lead staff. I apologize, there was a space before that period there. Didn't have time to fix it up here. But every city and town can elect three voting members from their mayor, council members, or senior staff, or four, 
um, if you have a city that's also represented on the board. All of them are welcome to participate in our meeting. So if you do the math, that's a good-sized committee. Um, that's, that's not a committee of a handful of people. That's a lot of people who can give us input and add their expertise. During the legislative session, and this was shared earlier, the LPC will meet weekly uh, during the session on Capitol Hill. Um, we'll also do some remote things there to work with the lead board of directors and staff to determine official positions on legislation. So we'll present pieces of legislation. We'll take votes and decide what our position is as the lead on that. Uh, to, we need a 60% consensus vote um, if, we're, if we're going in a direction there. And then the legislative policy committee typically meets once a month when the legislature is not in session. So next Monday, uh, we will have a legislative policy committee meeting um, that will be broadcast. If you're a voting member, you can attend. If you're not a voting member, you can watch and see what's going on. But we'll have these meetings basically monthly when we're not in, in the session. Um, so this is how we met this legislation. It's not just the league staff taking legislation and then going and making decisions on it. We need the input from you. As Cam said earlier, you are the league. You're the members. We take our direction from you. We work through these issues. We report back to you. So we want your input. We want to know how you feel about different policies that are coming along. Also, we have smaller working groups. So sometimes we need to work through specific issues like justice courts, short-term rentals, homelessness, land and water, fireworks, eminent domain, just to name a few that we've been working on lately. So we may also have smaller groups where we say, who wants to help out with fireworks? And we grab you know, a handful of people, a dozen people who want to get input on that, work through specific legislation or specific ideas, and then we'll bring it back to the full LPC before we take a position. So if you have a particular area that you're interested in, there are opportunities for, for you to give your input there. So one of the other things that we're, we have is, it's, it's called Cities Work. Um, you'll, you'll hear us talk about it a lot, but this is an objective, this is a, an outreach effort to build relationships of trust with legislators and ensure that they are more responsive to city leaders than to special interest groups. So I'm sure you're all aware of this, um, and if you're not, you're about to be aware of this. Special interest groups are working and talking to legislators all year long, not just during the legislative session. They're talking to their legislators all the time. There's lobbyists who are paid a lot of money to go and get their message, represent their special interest, represent their group. This is all they do. This is what they do. We want to make sure that they're also hearing from our cities and towns. We want them to know what's going on in your cities, in your towns, so legislation is not just being controlled by these special interest groups. So special interest groups are meeting with them all the time. Are you meeting with your legislators? Do you know your legislators? Are you talking to them as well? There's a lot of issues going on all the time. We want to make sure that you are also reaching out to your legislators. And we're going to talk about that more in just a minute. Um, but as you probably know, um, a lot of legislation gets generated by an anecdote. Um, somebody grabs a legislator and says, this thing is happening. I need you to fix it. And that drives legislation. If you're, they're not hearing the other side of the story from what's happening in the city from the city's perspective, then we're going to run into legislation that isn't going to help us. So, we want to so I'm going to run through a couple of policy issues. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because the thing that is most important to me today is that we get out on time. Information is good, but also get out on time. So I'm going to get us, get us back on track here. So the quick obvious slide, Utah is the nation's fastest growing state, we learned from the last census. Um, there's no question on this one. If you look at this map, we are the only one in that color. We are not only the fastest growing state, we're the only one even in that category we're growing so fast. Utah's population growth tops nation for the decade. So we were up there, but last year we were only number four. But still we are growing at a record rate. So there are a lot of issues and I know we could spend hours talking about all of these issues. So don't think because I'm jumping over these quickly that these are not important issues. But I just want to get you thinking about some of them and talk about how we can work on them this next legislative session. First, water. Um, I know we got a lot of white stuff out there today, but until two days ago, that was not the case. Um, this was a screenshot I grabbed back in September. I didn't bother to update it because it didn't matter that much. The drought situation looks about the same. We're in a drought. Um, that's not a good thing, but what we can use that is to leverage for some things we need to do to improve how we use water in the state. 
And there's going to be a lot of discussion about that in the legislature this year. The governor has put out, this is directly from the governor's website, some priorities, and that's gonna drive some of the conversation around legislation. Buyback program um, for turf. There's a lot of places where, you know, we maybe don't need turf that we've had it historically. Secondary water metering, that's been brought up a little bit. A lot of places have secondary water meters. A lot of places do not. And if you're not measuring it, it's really hard to know what we're doing with that water. Integrated land use and water planning. This is something that we've talked about in the league a lot and that we'll talk about during the session more. But a lot of times when we're looking at the land use, we're not talking about how does that impact water. So that's something we need to start thinking about in conjunction. And not anything that we talk about a whole lot, but agricultural optimization is another thing the governor wants to prioritize. So non-functional turf. Nevada recently enacted a ban on non-functional grass. So the question is, should we do something like that in Utah? And I can tell you there's a handful of legislators out there that think we should. So one of the things that we need to look at is how does that make sense for Utah going back for a prism? Is it a mandate? Is it a one size fits all? Or do we get some legislation that allows you the flexibility to think about this, but not to have a mandate across the board necessarily just yet? Secondary water meeting would touch on something we're gonna have to deal with. We're gonna have to look at that. And the big thing here is funding. Um, I think they set up in, I can't remember, South Ogden or Washington Terrace, it would cost millions of dollars to get all the secondary water metering. So there's something we're going to look at is, if we're going to go down this road, is this an unfunded mandate, or is we're, are we going to get some help from the state on this? Housing. We could talk about housing for hours and hours and hours, and I can tell you in the four months I've been with the league, that is like 80% of what we've been talking about is housing. Um, Zoning, retail incentives, affordable housing, short-term rentals, homelessness. There's a whole lot in this space to talk about and a whole lot that impacts you as the cities. So again, I'm just giving you things to keep you up at night about, nothing that we're gonna fix right here and now. But recently, Los Angeles Times reports that to save California, they sacrificed single family zoning. End of single family zoning in California. There are legislators who wanna talk about getting rid of single family zoning. And you can all react to that however you will. This is an editorial here in the Desert News where it talks about one of the viable solutions is to look at changing zoning plans. So get ready to talk about what do we do with zoning and how does that impact housing? One of the big questions that will be asked up at the legislative session that people are asking is what do we do with missing middle housing? If you're not aware of the term missing middle housing, get ready to be aware of it. Um, you've got to teach detached single family homes. You got apartment buildings on the other side, and then all of that stuff in the middle, duplexes, fourplexes, cottages, townhomes, all that kind of stuff, that's missing middle that a lot of people don't want in their town, maybe don't want in their cities, but is missing for people. And when our, we're talking housing affordability, this is something the legislature is going to want to talk about. How do we incentivize something like that? Land use, retail incentives. Um, this is another one that we were talking about a whole lot. There is legislation coming, and we'll see what it finally looks like that is basically going to say no retail incentives, no incentivizing retail to come into your city. And then a whole lot of hopefully exceptions that we're working on because there's a whole lot of reasons we think that cities should have some incentivizing powers. But there is going to be big discussion during this next legislative session about doing away with retail incentives, and we're working very hard to make sure that you don't lose um, all of those tools that you have for development. Short-term rentals. Um, there's a lot of discussion going on about short-term rentals, about illegal short-term rentals. Um, I don't expect um, there to be any really big movement on this next legislative session, and that's really just based on conversations in the past week. But this is something over the next years that we're going to need to deal with and we're going to need to look at and make sure cities have the rule or the powers and the the abilities to deal with short-term rentals. And then public safety. Um, it was mentioned, public safety, we have a shortage. We have a shortage of uh, police officers out there. We have a shortage of people who want to go into the field. So there's gonna be a lot of discussion around public safety. How do we get people there? How do we deal with retirement for public safety? So if that's an area you're interested in, um, or that's an area you're not aware of yet, get ready, that's something to, to buckle up. So I have flown through a lot of those issues, and again, I'm not doing it to just say, hey, here's issues that are not a big deal. Really just want you to start thinking about 
how these issues are going to impact you and your cities. And then this is the ask. Um, reach out to your legislators and talk to them about what's going on in your city. So raise of hands across the, across the whole state. How many people here have a relationship with their legislator? How many people talk to the legislator? And now I'm going to ask, how many people have talked to the legislator in the last year? Okay, good. That is good. How many people in the last six months? Still good. Good. In the last three months? Okay, good. So a lot of hands going up out there. Keep that up. That is so extremely vital. We met with uh, the Speaker of the House and the President of the Senate yesterday and the mayors up in Davis County. And the Speaker himself said this, and, and we didn't prompt him, so it was great. He said, if you are not meeting with your legislator on a regular basis, you need to be. He wants to be hearing from your city. So please work with your cities to get regular contact, not just from you personally, but from your city, from your experts, you know, city managers, from whoever it is that needs to talk about these issues. Let's get that from the legislature so we don't get these one size misfits all, or so they understand that the legislation they're passing has impacts on you at the city level. Um, I'm gonna jump to this slide um, just to really mess with you right after lunch, but you've got a bunch of shapes up there, or little dots. What shapes do you think those dots are gonna make when I hit play and they're gonna go in motion? And you, just, you can just think in your own head or whisper to your neighbor what shape you think is gonna take place there. Um, and, and see how you do. Def Leopard insignia. <laughs> so they start going, we've got some triangles, okay? Or maybe we've got some squares. Get really funky. Maybe it's a star. Or maybe it's all of them put together. So the reason I show that, other than the fact that it's like my favorite graphic ever, and I'm just going to let it play again while I talk, is we can look at the same pieces of information, these same data points, and come to very different conclusions if no one is there to connect the dots. If our special interest groups, and if the one mad constituent reaches out to the legislature and tells their story, they may think this is a triangle issue. And in fact, it's actually a square issue, or maybe it's a star issue, or maybe the whole picture is something much more complex put together. So you are the lead. You're, you're the hounds, as Cam said earlier. We need you reaching out and talking to the legislators. We need you going out and telling your stories about what secondary metering looks like. What does turf look like? What are short-term rentals doing in your community? And if we get those stories out there, that is going to help us get to those better outcomes as we work it. So again, you've got our contact information. Please reach out to us. If you need help connecting with legislators, reach out to us. We can, we can help you make those connections. If you have questions on policy issues, please reach out. We want to talk to you about them. But please, please tell your stories to the legislators to help us get those best outcomes. And with that, any questions? Any questions? Anywhere? We'll take them anywhere. But also, if you ask questions, we're behind schedule and it's on you now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Please ask your questions. Okay. Uh, All right. Then, Cam, I think we're moving to a 10 minute. Oh, we have a question back here. Yeah. Uh, a lot of this seems to be reactionary. And is there an agenda that we have if we have certain problems, whether it be mandates or, or uh, too much control on certain aspects of local government administration. Is there anything where we actually want to move something forward ourselves and have the legislators su support it? Absolutely, yeah, that's a great question. The question basically, yeah, is, is, is there anything where we're moving things forward and getting the legislators to support it? Yes, uh, we're working all throughout the interim time period when, when we're not in session and during session. If there, are, if there are things that we decide we want to go after, yeah, we collaborate on, on several pieces of legislation. We go find sponsors to sponsor legislation on our behalf. Absolutely. 